All right. Well, hey, this is. Oh, let me start off by just telling you. My moringa bitters. You know, I guess you're supposed to do it like twice a day, but you know, I've been slacking off. You know, no, I shouldn't say that. No, I'm just doing one spray because I've been running. I've been running around from my uh, my uh, undisclosed location <laughs> to here where I'm supposed to be. You know, the bitters. But I leave the bitters here. I like that. Anyway, deal with that later. Oh, I got some pistachios. Oh, did I tell you about this? His sister, like she's still. And I'll tell you about her another time, okay? Another time for that. I mean, stay tuned. Because this is going to be a long one anyway. Because I'm going to read to you. Oh, I got. My thing is, I haven't had. Like, a, you know, mango juice in a long time. And this is a mango juice. Let me put this, put this back. It's a mango juice blend. Fresh press, not from concentrate. You always want to do that. Concentrate means they put sugar and water in there. Let me see, what does it mean? They got a, some sort of bio, bio dy body dynamic, organic mango puree, biodynamic organic grape juice, biodynamic organic apple juice. Now, if they're in that, if they're in that um, order of uh, uh, the order in which um, the amount is, then that means it's mostly mango juice, which is what I want. I had mango juice a long time. I've been doing all that stuff, so I'm gonna have some mango juice. <sighs> Got to have my mango. So I have mango juice. Ah. Hmm. <sighs> Hope you will. Look. Man, you know we're in the middle of a pandemic. Don't panic, even though you're in a pandemic. Uh, some things are getting canceled. Well, canceled, postponed. So happy, film. Uh, uh, you know, from my man uh, Ra, I'm supposed to do his. Uh, uh, that's going to be pushed back. They don't know when because it's going to be at the. Uh, I think it's the Schomburg Library, and all the libraries in New York are closed. Uh, but but Jabari Oze is supposed to be there. Charles Charles Barron. Uh, got got the got the virus, so him and his wife, Miss Inez, and they're they're both locked in. We would say, uh, Doctor Jeffries, uh, Mandy Bowman, and uh, Patricia Newton. All these people are supposed to speak on there, but it's not happening. Anyway, so I figure it's not going to happen. And y'all, well, y'all, we are just, you know, we can't go no place. I'm going to read to you. Now, let, here's the rules of engagement, though. Now, remember. In this, uh, oh, before I get to rules, game, I just want to bring up one more point. Um, this is important to me. This here is a uh, is a thing. But in New York, they have these special buses, whatever whatever they call them. And then and there's a bus line. Uh, the M60 goes, you know, through Manhattan from the west side all the way through LaGuardia Airport. And uh, my brother, who's homeless, stays at LaGuardia Airport. So every once in a while, I go visit him. We'll get to him some other time. In fact, he's listed. There's an interview. Maybe I'll put a link, you know, like that. Anyway, during this pandemic, you, the people, what happens if you um, you 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 get the just like a, a kiosk, whatever you call it, thing. You push the button in, and you know, you take your card, put it in there, your metro card or cash, put it in there, and they give you a slip so that they know that you paid, and you get on the bus. Now, if if the authorities come through and they check your thing, and you ain't got one of these, it costs like three hundred dollars, you know, something like that, some 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 something like that. But the thing is. With this pandemic, you know, ain't nobody checking. <laughs> they ain't gonna check it. Be, be t t talking to you, whatever. Have you just have to look at your ID and put their hand all over it. So you know, you can get on them buses all day long, and be for free, and they, they're changing that stuff. They're gonna do the Omni thing, some something they're gonna do, some modern thing. But you say, well, wait, well, brother, if you didn't have to pay, then why you cut the slip? This is what I'm saying, especially in this time when you have a situation like this, right? This is the time you can test. Your principles, your just test your own principles. So don't let this panic, you know, change you. Right? Yeah, I could get over, it, but I got enough money to pay, you know, like that. You know what I'm talking about. Don't get me wrong. I come from the downtrodden, so I know, I know. If you ain't, you know, you could save a little money here, put that on, on, on some hand sanitizer or some, hey, get some ivory so Forget all this other person. If you can get all that. Then you know I understand. I understand. So I'm not. Real, I'm not against it. 
But if you if you want to remain principal, it's really good because then you know the universe is on your side. Anyway. So if you hear stuff in the background, that's of course buddy here. We're both you know sequestered. But I'm sequestered in the office thing, he's sequestered. I know it's all right. We wash our hands of this stuff like that. Um uh, also, you might hear, you know, a little TV, you know, because it's constant. And, you know, I have to say this. I don't want, well, you know, politicians, whatever have you. But to tell you the truth, at least in New York, Mario Cuomo, uh, not Mario Cuomo, his son, the Cuomo guy. It's not Mario. Mario was, was the governor when I was. There is Mario. Anyway, the Cuomo guy, the governor of New York, he's actually doing some leadership. And you do need the logical leadership that people will listen to, elected to, blah, 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 blah. Um, so that, I'm going to read to you page, I think it's page 48, 4 and 8 is 12, every, yeah, right here. I'm going to start right about here. I'm going to go through this whole page, and it'll end up right there. So it's a little bit. Now, a couple of things. Oh, first of all, this is the book I'm reading from. It's Frank Yerby's. I, just, I finished this a while ago. Uh, Captain Rebel. Now, Frank Yerby, he's a, he's a brother. But, you know, the thing is, what, what do they call it? See, this book fell apart because I got it in Cape Town. It was like 10 Rand, which is like no money at all from the street guy, you know. Uh, he's he's famous for the author of The Fox and the Harrow, um, and, and they call him America's uh, something, you know, who is called the world's most popular storyteller. You know, he was born in, basically, well, uh, born, in, born in 1916. Uh, guys, I mean, anyway, the point is, he did a lot of his writings in the 40s and the 50s, mainly the 50s. And uh, when I first... Uh, came in contact with him was but it's called the Dahomey and a man from Dahomey something like that it's about the uh, Dahomey uh, uh, a prince or whatever he's he's captured um, and he's sold into slavery and then that starts this whole so thing so he's a historical novelist so he writes the now then he stopped that I say stopped that but I guess he the money you know he said hey it's better if I write and, and then they never put his his picture on the covers or nothing like that so you don't know he's a black guy you know what I mean it's Frank Yerby you know, you know it could be anybody. So anyway, so he's one of my favorite writers. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, I'm I, uh, I'm going to read here now. Here's the rules of engagement for this. I am not the best allowed reader in the world, right? So forgive me, or if you have to tune out now, bye, see you later. You know, I, I gave you little messages that just you need to know. But this is important to me, and actually, it's, it's, it has something to do with AGOS and look in a certain way. So uh, should I take my glasses off? No, I'm gonna read my glasses on, my sunglasses on, because you know, that's the way it is. Uh, let me start from where. Okay, uh, uh, this is the the, the protagonist. Uh, this guy uh, Tyler, uh, he's talking to uh, this guy. Uh, Renee, is, I'm not going to tell you anything, but, but, you know, but you'll find out from here. Talking to Renee, and uh, Tyler is a white guy, you know, big, big, big guy in, in town. And Renee is, a, is one of those octoroons, quadroons, or whatever it is. And he owns, well, you'll find out from there. And so he's talking to him. But Tyler sees that, that, that Tyler, his name is Meredith? Oh, well, but Tyler sees that uh, Renee is like basically mistreating the slaves that he inherited. And uh, so he has a word with him, say, yo, man. Well, you'll see what happens. Okay. I saw him. I think this is Tyler talking. No, 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 no. Okay, this is, let me say Renee. Okay. Uh, Renee says, uh, what's Tyler's last name? I don't know. It's, just, it's New Orleans, so it's got them funny names, you know. If I mess up a name, I don't care, right? Um, here we go. Tyler, he said, or do I have to call you Moss, Ty, Ty too? You can call me anything except a child of God, Renee. Uh, what's the trouble, my friend? In fact, let me take this off so I can read a little better. I don't know if it make me read better. Then uh, Renee says, these, these blockheads. I come to offer my services to my country, and they've refused me. Me, Rene Dittmier, whatever his name is, uh, the largest slave owner in my parish. I'm a free man. I was born free, and just because I know, just because your mother was a free woman of color, damn little color, that is, uh, who um, who taught your father's who caught your father's eye at the octoroon ball, 
just because your skin's a shade tan even in winter and your hair's a mite kinky doesn't make doesn't make sense. I've, I've heard it all before. You're the owner of 300 niggas. San Suchi is the grandest manor house in the parish. It's not in the state, but Renee, man, you're, you're up against some mighty stubborn facts. To these folks, yellow, brown, or black, a nigger's a nigger. Why don't you accept it and kind of stay out of the way? I do, whispered, I, I, I do, whispered Renee. But to defend my country is my right. You haven't any rights, Tyler said sternly. Any nigger, any man of color exists on the white man's sufferance. Um, you, you're, you, you've been mighty damn lucky, Renee. When your old man died and left you, San, San Sochi, all folks did not, uh, all folks did not grumble. If he had had any legitimate white children, you wouldn't have stood a hope or a prayer. That, Ty Renee said quietly, was hardly possible since my father lived all his life with my mother in a union that would have been sanctified by the church if the laws of the state had permitted it and never betrothed uh, to, uh, to so much as to look at another. Uh, oh, and he never bothered to look at uh, to and never bothered to so much as look at a woman of his own race. I was his only son. And he loved me, Montour, Montour, like like my God, uh, how he loved me. I had it all: the finest clothes, the best horses, the Savon education, everything, except the acceptance of your father's people. Tyler said, "Everything except what you wanted most in the world." You you know too much, Renee, mother, especially the things we are not uh, uh, we're not. Right, the pressure thing's not right. Knowing, you you visit us soon, in a week or two. Tyler said, "I'm I'm pinning, I'm pinning, I'm pinning. Okay, I'm pinning for a glimpse of Laurel. You might be uh, so rightly proud, Renee. I am, and frightened. She's all I have, Ty. And what's to become of her? What kind of life can she have? A mighty good one if you just come down off your high horse." Now, there are hundreds or, or no thousands of free men of color in Louisiana, some of them highly educated, even rich, like the Dumas and the, and the Clovises and somebody else. Mm. You take them. I'm afraid my daughter won't. Damn it, Renee. You mulattoes are worse than white, than white trash when it comes to being down on niggas. There's something shameful about that. You have no right to hate your own. What, Renee said quietly? What, what is your own, Tyler? The niggas hate us. The whites look down on us. Any white, even a red neck clay eating ignoramus from the upstate Pine Barrens. People I could buy and sell by the dozen. That's where you're wrong, old man, Tyler said. You can't buy them. They're not for sale. Not even we can buy them. They're the freest gosh dump gosh blank critters on earth. Free to starve, Renee sneered. Yep, to starve and sit under a tree all day uh, communicating communing with a jug of bust head. Free to get scrawny toehead brats they can't feed, but free nonetheless. Absolutely free. Because you're because they're outside uh, because they're outside our world. I mean, the world he's talking about is like the world of like, like slave owners and you know plantation owners like that. We don't want them, can't use them, so they've got a kind of negative freedom of uselessness, and a real freedom based on their pride and their willingness to take on a pack of sixteen wildcats to defend their right to do exactly as they damn well please. Can you say as much? Can I? No, said Renee slowly. Still, still, every man living except maybe your pine barren whites is at least a little slave. But, con but conventions, or of all the things our pride, our honor, our education, families, friends, and the world we live in demand of us. Takes a lot of guts to be free, Renee. 
haven't got them myself. You you either. Not even so, uh, not even as much freedom as a black nigga you take a road high to. You're enslaved to the desire of being what you're not, of trying to belong to, uh, to a world that rejects you without ever considering whether it's worth belonging to, which I doubt. Wake up, friend. Wash your muck, wash the muck out of your hair and let it kink. Be yourself, man. Be Renee. I'm going to stop right there. I don't even going to explain, explain it to you. You know exactly what I just said. You know exactly what I just said. You know exactly what Frank Yerby just wrote in the 50s. And it's true. Just to let you know, it's true. So says me. T, from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet. Letting you know what I only expect from a... An A-D-O-S reality. Oh, by the way, that's, that's Fannie Lou Hamer. Okay. Check you again sometime soon.